I'm Moses, the founder of The Edit London, and we're on to episode three of Business, Fashion and Cool Shit. This is the podcast that aims to understand a little bit more about what it takes to become a champion in your chosen field. And that segues perfectly onto professional fighter, Harlem Eubank. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. Professional fighter, 19, 19 and 0, 8 KOs, and poised to take a title shot against Adam Azim. Um... But before, of course, we get to that, um, tell us, you, you played a bit of football for, for your home club, Brighton. Um, British karate champion. Yeah, from right. Two times. Two times. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And, but I guess, and then turned pro at 19, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, turned pro at, I think, I, I started boxing at 18. Oh. Uh, I actually turned pro at, I think, uh, 21. My first pro fight was at 22. Wow. So, um. So yeah, it was kind of a short learning curve. Yeah. Well, what what made you make that step across? And and actually, before you become pro, how many fights do you need to have to have the confidence to to make that switch over? I was constantly asking to turn pro because I'm used to like I was watching professional boxing. I was watching the guys that inspired me, the Muhammad Ali's, the guys that dance around the ring and and um, have their own style and flair. And and you don't really see that flaring the amateurs. The amateurs is more like a system yeah. of point scoring. Um, so it was always the pros that, you know, I was like, after five, ten fights, I was like, when can I turn pro? Right. And, and, you know, trying to get advice from people around me. And I, I kind of stuck around to get more experience. So I think four years is, is a quite short span um, of experience as an amateur. So yeah, yeah. I was kind of, I wanted to get in and, and get Get cracking straight away. Get ready to go. Um, obviously, that first time walking through the ropes prof- uh, of your professional fight, kind of, what, uh, you know, you've got uh, a lineage of uh, that, that, of course, we all know. Kind of what's going through your mind at that point? Because it feels like a lot of pressure at such a young age. Yeah, I think starting, I never really uh, wanted to get into boxing from a young age because it's something that had already been accomplished to the fullest. Like, how do you even try and replicate that success is is it's a pretty daunting task so yeah, yeah. i thought let me try my my hand at something else and, and get my own success in a different lane um and i always thought from a young age obviously i, I done karate but um from like seven to eleven um won them championships and then went to uh went into football after that around kind of secondary school age when you you just start in secondary school all your mates are playing football and and that's the cool thing to do. Yeah, so of um, I kind of dived into that, but pretty pretty seriously. Um, after one season playing local, like grassroots, uh, I got scouted by Brighton Hove Albion, uh, my local club, and um, I had a four year contract with them. Played for them until under 16s. Wow. So with that four year span, that's like all your secondary school years, really. Yeah. So instead of going out to to, <laughs> to parties on a Friday night. I'd uh, I'd have to prepare myself for the the game on the Saturday, you Absolutely. know. So I was kind of thrown into that professional training regime from from a young age, really. Yeah. Um, and and then of course, being nineteen and zero, um, eight KOs under your belt. Like, who, who was the hardest fight? Um, they all presented different challenges, um, different different times, and different stages of my, of my experience level. Yeah. Um, I would say, on paper, Timo, my last opponent, he's fought at uh, world level. He's pushed, um, you know, world champions to, you know, to the final bell, yep. and um, and was coming off great winning form when I fought him. So, on paper, definitely him. But I, I had some 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 pretty tough fights before. I fought a guy called Elliot Chavez, yep. um, a kind of unknown Mexican. <laughs> Uh, quantity that had previously stopped um, Lara, well. um, you know the Mexican in in one round. So there's some some opposition like that that go under the radar, but it's experience in the bank yeah. when I go into these, you know, these competitive fights. Yeah. It's, it's them type of experiences yeah. that that are gonna make me come out on top. Yeah, and and obviously you touched on Timo. I think was that was for in your hometown of Brighton. Yeah. How, how did that feel? First of all, walking out. Sensational was yeah. the, my first homecoming fight. I fought away a lot 
yeah. up to that point gaining my experience and then I, it, it was like I could bring something back yeah. um, for the people of the city so, and my friends and family um, a lot of familiar faces there and to, to kind of bring it back there with my uncle on board at this stage too um, have him there beside me and um, go out there and put on a performance, yeah. a devastating performance, and, yeah. and take Team Wilder. Yeah, that's it. And I think it was, you stopped him in the third. I dropped him in the third, yeah. <laughs> I dropped him in the third, and I thought... Did you think you'd won it at that point, I think? I didn't think I'd, I didn't think I'd get him so early. So I was kind of like, I knew he was tough, and I knew that he'd probably recover, so I was right. thinking, <laughs> let me try and get him out of here now, because <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> otherwise this could be a long night. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I think I tried to unleash a certain amount of punches and, yeah. and I could feel my legs burning up as I was doing it. I could see, I could see he wasn't ready to go. After about 15 seconds of, of trying to unload on him, I could see he was still there. So I was like, time to, time to calm down <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, continue the, the game plan and, and continue to, to do what I was doing before that point. Well, that, that's exactly it. I guess from that, that mental point of view, it's you touch on the game plan. Like you're going in there with an idea. <coughs> You've knocked him down, you know, and, um, and as you say, you're starting to unload a little bit. But again, it's about that conservation of energy and just knowing when to actually yeah. pull back a little bit. Yeah, at first it's shocked because you, you always prepare for that 12 rounds, you know, yeah. that full distance. When that happens so early in the fight, sometimes you can see red and think, yes, he's, he's gone, it's time to, time to get him out of there. Yeah. And then, uh, obviously, you have to reassess and readjust. And, and uh, yeah, my coach after was like, I'm glad that, <laughs> I'm glad that you saw he wasn't ready because yeah. <laughs> he was about to blow out like, like the way he was going in there. So um, <laughs> I, could, I could feel my legs kind of burning up and I could still see him there and I was like, I'm I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna reset and I'll get him later down the line. Yeah, I'm okay for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Obviously, you, you touched on your uncle, and, and that of course refers to uh, Chris Eubank Senior, um, who I think you've you know recently teamed up with. Um, I guess h- how how did that happen, and what um, I guess what does it mean to to you to have him in your corner? It's great. Um, I started out in the sport. Uh, I wanted to do it the hard way. I wanted to do it the way where nothing's handed to you um, and um, I didn't have that opportunity handed to me at the start so I, I'm grateful for that I had to go out and, and, and get it um, the traditional way the way that my uncle went out and yeah. uh, forged his own path in the sport and I think that gives you a different um, it gives you a different grit and resistance as a fighter yeah. uh, when you have to go and do that so um, I built I built my path to 18 and 0, and um, and then it was time for for senior to, you know, he, he's always been a big supporter of me, and he's always you know, called me after my fights and, and and told me what I did well, what I didn't do well, give me advice, yeah. and he's always been been there for for that advice to try and push me on, yeah. and um, yeah keen to to be involved and to, to stand beside me as I yeah. as I uh, embarked on the next stage of my career and, yeah. and that started with, with the homecoming fight um, that was the first fight back in the Brighton Centre since he previously fought there so um, yeah I think it was divine timing everything came together and um, I was able to to bring a great performance back to my city yeah fantastic and and Obviously, Eubank Jr. that we're all familiar with um, as well. He said some complimentary things. I think he said things like, you know, Harlem is slick, good movement, great feet, all rounder. Um, you know, is that true? Is that <laughs> is, is he right? <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go against him. Yeah. You know, he's got the experience in the sport. I've trained beside him for a long, a long yeah. time. So uh, yeah, he's he's well aware of what my ability and what I can do in the ring. Yeah. And um, yeah, when someone like that gives you a compliment, you, you, know, you have to go with it. Yeah. So did, did you guys get in the ring together? Yeah, yeah we've trained to, together a long time, done many rounds together. So yeah, um, yeah, I know what he's good at and, and uh, 
he's, he's aware of my strengths as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, talking about Eubank Junior, you know, we, we talked about Conor Ben earlier. And I think you'd, you'd, you'd called him a scammer um, out in the press. I mean, tell us a bit more about that. Well, I think, you know, when you fail a test, you're, you're frozen out of the game. Yeah. And um, it's, it, it had been like a, a two year <coughs> process of making the public think you're, you're about to fight and you haven't got a license. So you're, you're scamming, yeah. scamming people with the online stuff. It's just, it's just fake, isn't it? It's, yeah. So it's a, it's a scam. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and that's what it is. And I think you've called them out at 147. And of course, there, there was a, there's been a lot of talk over, I think maybe the last 12 to 18 months about, of course, um, Eubank Jr. fighting him. I mean, who, who gets that fight? We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I think, I think uh, Junior's far surpassed um, Connor. You know, in terms of where he is in the sport, he's looking. Yeah. He's looking at uh, big, massive fights. You know, against multiple weight world champions um, in Canelo. You know, they're the type of fights that he's looking at. So. Yeah. I mean, Canelo is an incredible fighter all the way around, isn't he? He's, yeah, he's he's one of the one of the greats of this era. Yeah, he's leading the charge at the moment. There's some yeah. great fighters in the lightweight classes as well, but in terms of what his resume and what he's done in the sport, he's you know, he's at the top. And yeah. one thing about boxers that always um, strike me again is that mental resilience, right? And and again, really, that can be the difference between winning or losing, of course. Um, last year, in and around the Timo fight, I think you had um, you know some tragic news that your your, your father sadly passed away with uh, with dementia. So of course, sorry sorry for that. But how how do you how do you pick yourself up from that? How do you get refocused? How do you you know um, regain composure and then keep on pressing forward in the way that you did? It's it's difficult. It's difficult. I had uh, some tragic news um, with my cousin. You know. As well, not right. previous to that. So, um, but my dad was struggling with dementia yeah. for many years, and to see him struggle, uh, it, it, it's a long process with dementia because you're seeing someone deteriorate for for a long for a long number of years. You know, you're seeing them degrade in front of you, yeah. and um, when they get to that end stage, it's it's sad, and you can see they're in a lot of pain. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was. It was tough, but it was also, you know, he was out of pain and, and, you know, moved on to, to a higher, a higher place. Yeah. You know? yeah. um, I think when you have that belief, that's that's a, a strong. You have that belief and faith uh, in God and in a higher power, that helps you deal with with loss and knowing that someone uh, you love is moving to a different place, and um, you know it's not. It's not over for them as they're, they're moving to a uh, a place better than better than the, the place we are here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really appreciate you sharing that, and of course, looking forward to kind of that next phase. Um, you know, you're you're in conversations, let's say, with you know um, about fighting Adam as in, and um, I know we can't talk too much about it. <laughs> But I mean, who 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 wins that fight? I you know, do, I do win that fight. That's why I took it. Um, <laughs> do you, do fight I wanted for for a long time. I haven't been too outspoken about it because there's there's many big fights um, that we could have took, but yeah. this is the one we chose. Yeah. And um, yeah, I've signed I've signed the fight, so I'm looking forward to, to putting on a devastating performance. Yeah. And um, I'm just waiting for the the announcement of. Um, date, time, place, yeah. and um, I'm gonna turn up and, and show out a fantastic performance. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing it. And of course, we, we were having a conversation earlier, and we kind of briefly touched on um, YouTuber boxing, and then obviously got onto the conversation around um, Mike Tyson and Jake Paul, which still blows my mind a little bit, to be honest. But uh, what, what's your take on it? I mean, yeah, it's. Um like with the YouTuber boxing, I think it's entertaining. Like I've I've been to a few of their events, um, 
and everything apart from the fight is very <laughs> <laughs> is very entertaining. You know, they've got a they've got a walkout with music and they're dancing. It's 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 like a performance. Yeah. Um, obviously, the production's amazing. The fire, the yeah, the, the whole uh, performance side of it. Then obviously they get in the ring and it it kind of dips a little bit yeah. because it's it's it, it, that's not necessarily that's not their field. Um, but I respect them going go, you know fighting another man. You have to respect that. Yeah. And then when the fight finishes, then it's it's all exciting again. Yeah. You know they're jumping <laughs> on the ropes, you know talking rubbish to the cameras yeah. and uh, it's all. So a big kind of performance, really. Yeah. Um, so I appreciate that 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 entertainment side of it. Yeah. Um, when you got someone like Jake Paul, who's a young kind of physical um, specimen who's been training for a long time, and 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 someone that's proved himself, you know, to be one of the best in the sport, but is older now. I I don't really want to see that guy yeah. get in the ring with a young kind of physical dude I, I like if it's two older retired guys yeah it's more of a show it's a showcase you know they're not trying to hurt each other really you yeah. know they're trying to display you want to see when you've got Roy, Roy Jones and, and Mike Tyson you want to see clips of kind of what they did in the past what you've known for, for their highlight reel yeah you want to see them pull out certain moves and it's not about them trying to take the other guy out whereas this situation uh, I think it leaves kind of a, a funny taste because it's a young guy that wants to take out an old guy to to uh, you know try and fool the public that he's he's beatboxing. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> that's it. And t- talking about um, entertainment, and I, I shouldn't say this, and hopefully he will never see this. <laughs> Ryan Garcia, of course. I mean, all the stuff that was going on before Devin Haney. What, what, what do you make of that? Um, I think, I think he was. I think he's been in dark places uh, mentally. Yeah. I think that he still came and and brought unbelievable performance. Like he knew how to beat Devin. Yeah. Um, so I, the build up was entertaining for me. The you know people doubt him whether whether he was gonna be in the right space mentally or not, yeah. and then come in and shock in the world with that performance. I was loving it, yeah. And uh, but once you know once it comes out after that you've you failed a drugs test, yeah, it's all irrelevant. Yeah. Um, you know, I was I was a number one fan of of the you know of the build up <laughs> and the performance, but after. It's uh, it's what it's washed out, you know. I think for a lot of us, I think we all thought, okay, it, you know, he, he's clearly going through some challenge. He's had the fight, okay, and I think everybody was like hats off to him. I think he's fooled all of us. But actually, since that point, it seems to have amped up on a whole other level as well. I think he's released rap music. He's doing, <laughs> you know, I mean, again, good good for him. It's, yeah. it's amazing to see, but you know, it just seems to have gone to a whole other. Yeah, I think he's. You know his mental state is separate from the performance. Yeah. You know which, which is great for him that, regardless of that, where is that mentally that he could come and perform like that? But I think it can kind of overshadow the fact that he might still need help. Yeah. And you know with his more recent online kind of exploits and um and remarks, I think uh, it's clear that that he does need help and. Yeah. Yeah, he needs to he needs to go and get that and find the right people and, and have the right people around him. That's it. But in terms of the performance, when you when you fail a drugs test, everything everything is uh, everything has question marks over it. Yeah. So um, yeah, you can't you can't respect you can't you can't respect the performance in the same light. And I was a big fan of it. Yeah. How how much of that is influenced by the people around him? Because I guess as you said, you know, you need to seek help and need to actually have those conversations, right, with your trusted um, parties. But how much of it is, is it his team or people around him saying, look, just go and do that? Or, or is he just... In, ter- in terms of what? In terms of uh, the, the failed test, you mean? I, don't know, I think it's, well, I guess a little bit of everything. I think maybe kind of 
um, it could be the test, but also the way that he's behaving. Um, you know, I, I would like to think his team would wrap their arms around him and say, okay, we need, just need to pull back a little bit and get focused on, um, you know, being Ryan Garcia. Yep. Um, but it kind of seems to be that maybe they've kind of pushed him the other way. I think he saw the reaction and the amount of traction that his comments were getting and that that kind of, uh, you know, gave him a surge to continue. Yeah. And because um, people were engaged in it. Is he okay? Is he not? You know, they like what he's talking about. Um, his support for certain abuse. Yeah. Um, he gained a new audience with it, I think. Yeah. And that kind of, that, Pushed him to, to continue, but I think he had a lot of stuff mixed in with each other, where it was, where it was like it's not necessarily fighting for that cause; it's yeah. mixed in with other stuff. And you, when you mix lo- a load of stuff together, it loses the power that it, it should have for for support you're giving for certain things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think it's it's the people you have around you. You need the right friends around you. You obviously need the right team in terms of the boxing, but the boxing people are only in the gym. So when you're outside of the gym, you, you need to have family and, and friends that have your best interests. Yeah, yeah. And I know he was walking into stores, kind of buying people lots of sneakers, which gives us a nice segue into, in, in, into you know, wh- why we're here. Um, I guess, how do you, um, I know he was sponsored, I think, by Dior and Amiri. And yeah. um, how, 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 like, what's your style, obviously? I, I think I was saying to you before, I was kind of seeing an interview, you wearing a jacket, yeah. you know, lo, low-cut top, and I was thinking, okay, he's yeah. going to come quite smart to that. <laughs> and, and actually, you look perfect for, hey. for, for absolutely what Yeah, this is, this is the, uh, the more casual <laughs> yeah. bit for the streetwear and, and the trainers. But yeah, I love, my, I love my fashion. I've, I've always found it interesting, and I've never been able to dress the same way that other people dress. I've always, for example when I was a kid and skinny jeans were in, I could never wear skinny jeans. Always, <laughs> my quads were always too big for that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I had to find certain shapes and silhouettes that, that I felt suited me well and, and uh, clothes I felt comfortable to move in. I'm an active person, so yeah. I like oversized kind of fits. Yeah. So, so I feel comfortable when I'm, whether I'm running, sitting down, um, just kind of cozy yeah. um, clothes really and, yeah, I, I like runway kind of silhouettes more than um, more than anything else, really. Yeah. And obviously, you were at Paris Fashion Week just recently. We were talking about that. I think you were you, you were at the Dior show as well. Tell us about that. I mean, were you it was great. Great to see their twenty five um, spring summer collection. They got some serious pieces. The show was amazing. The music um, was like penetrating the room. It was like some. Small kind of, it wasn't a massive venue. It was more like small and kind of close-knit. Yeah. And um, it was amazing. Um, it's crazy how quick they kind of put it up and, and then descend it as well. Um, yeah. It's like a little capsule in, in time, isn't it? And it's so, I mean, they, amazing to see, they, see their work like that. That's it. And for, for anyone that, that's watching, these shows literally last for maybe 10 minutes, yeah. 15 minutes. There's yeah. a big build-up <laughs> and you're kind of standing around or sitting around and... It happens and then it's over. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I, I wasn't used to it, but it yeah. was. Uh, I was really good. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Enjoyed my time there. Good. Now, this is a segment of the show. We're doing this with every guest, uh, which we call buy or bin. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call out five pairs of sneakers, and all you need to say is whether or not you'd buy them or whether you'd bin them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> The first pair yeah. is the Jordan 1 Uni in LA. So yeah. it's the pair that actually I'm wearing. So. <laughs> I've got to tread carefully now. <laughs> I, I don't know what you're going to say. So would, would, you, would you buy or would you bin? I think I'd buy. Okay. I would buy. I like the, I like the ones. And the leather, the, the leather looks soft. I like the off-white. Um, yeah, it's a crepe that can go with a lot of, a lot of different things. Good man. I appreciate you for the compliment. <laughs> Don't want um, you to take them off mid podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just throw them away, like for God's sake. Um, all right. So the one of the one of the sneakers that was getting called out a lot actually at Fashion Week, and we saw Pharrell wearing it was the Adidas Superstar ninety two. Mm-hmm. It's got a pair of the Pradas behind you, same silhouette. Kind of what? Yeah. What are your thoughts? Would you buy? Or would you bin? I like them. I'd, I'd buy. I, f- I feel like they 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 go through different phases. Yeah. Um, 
but they're always something that that come around again um and they're a classic so you can definitely uh you can definitely style it yeah. in in any kind of era i think yeah 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 i'd buy it and what about i think i know what the answer is going to be but the jordan one off white chicago i think you you got to over my right shoulder love it <laughs> love it i actually uh yeah, I love this pair. I've, I was looking for this this pair when it came out, and then the resale just went crazy. And I was like, I better, I better leave that one. It's, the, <laughs> it's still a Jordan Jordan one, you know. I can't That's go crazy it. on it. Um, and they I mean, right now they're probably trading for about five k. Yeah. When see, there was the news that Virgil sadly passed. I mean, my goodness, I remember literally overnight. I think almost every pair of the tens and actually at the time it was around when the um the 50 pairs of lots you know the dunks were out yeah uh, honestly the price has probably increased by 30 40 50 percent on on everything and it was it was absolutely insane to see Mm. just how um well uh, how much impact one person would have on such an industry it makes it more of an art piece now especially that's the funny thing with art it's like sometimes the artist doesn't get the reward, the credit they deserve yeah. until they're passed, yeah. you know, and people can really appreciate their work um, for what it is. And, and that's, I noticed that a lot in the, the kind of creative art world. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, he really had a massive impact on uh, fashion and, and culture as well. Yeah. So ju- just to be, so you would buy this pair? 100%. Would, would, would you buy it at 5K? <laughs> I, <laughs> I'd have to pause. Yeah, yeah, I'd have to go home and think about it. That's fair for That's a couple fair. months, <laughs> and then come back and buy it. That's it. Yeah. Think, thinking about your life choices. Yeah. What about the Yeezy Five Hundred Ash Gray? That sh- that shape, that silhouette, I like it yeah. um, when it's off. But on me personally, I've never found it sits too well with trousers. And um, yeah, I'd have to bin that one. Yeah, fair. Okay, so we're, bid- we're bidding the Yeezys, but what about to finish off? We've got the upcoming release of the Jacquemus Air Max one. It's coming out in white, silver, and I think red. Yep. Uh, the, the white one looks cool. The white one looks nice. Um, it's clean, yeah. small logo, yeah. which I like. It's subtle. Yeah. Um, but that, the Air Max one's another, another shoe that I like off, but on me personally. Um, it's it's never really it's never really popped off. Yeah. So um, to keep it even, I'll, I'll have to bin that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> been, in, been, been in the Jackamus. So now, so now we we got a little sense of your kind of style. But what about if you weren't a professional fighter? We already know you've 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 um, you know you played football and obviously karate. What what do you think you'd be doing? hard to say I think I'm very passionate about fashion and um, silhouettes and potentially creating uh, my own shapes and clothes um, so I definitely that's definitely a passion of mine right um, is that something you've explored before or? Uh, I've not dived too deep into it but you know in terms of my own clothes like yeah I like to do a lot of research and mood boards and um, Put a certain amount of time into it, which yeah. which could translate to, to something else in the future. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'd, I'd be excited to to go f- deeper into that industry and um, nutrition as well. I'm, I'm very passionate about how you fuel the body, and um, you know, I've been plant based for nine years, and right. kind of that's a big interest of mine as well, like health, wellness, and and fueling the body with the right stuff. Yeah. That, I, that was that. Uh, sorry, it's yeah. taking me by surprise. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. So like, that wasn't in the notes. That wasn't. In the notes. <laughs> but that's it. <laughs> but that, again, was that was that something you consciously did? Was that or was that kind of influence? Or was that something you just thought actually? I think I, I feel like it was one of them things where I saw a lot. I saw a lot that could be wrong with the world, and that's one of one of the things where I was like, I can make a. A conscious choice to fuel my body yeah. um, that's kind of one of the most revolutionary things you can do yeah. um, if there's a system that you think that isn't uh, doesn't promote health or you know 
or healthy li- living that's one of the that's one of the most uh, revolutionary things you can do is yeah. is make an impact on yourself and you see people um you, sh- you see that kind of wave effect where people around you start to uh, make similar choices and and more conscious choices of how they're fueling the body yeah. i think what seems to come out through it again it's that consciously choosing to create certain actions um which then provides positive impact which seems to come through a lot of the things that you're saying and and i guess with that i guess what advice would you give to uh those people who maybe have had periods of challenge or um again are just finding it slightly tricky to get going again kind of what would you say to that i would say that perseverance um keep going have faith um you know every day things can change for the better yeah. um you may have periods where they they change for the worse but it's temporary and every day you you have another chance to to develop and to to change things yeah. um so have perseverance to keep going and uh, just know that things will can and will change yeah. along the way and that's what the human experience we're going to experience everything you know and i think that i feel like that's a big thing now with uh people struggling with like depression and things like that because um there's a shift to to think that we're meant to feel a certain way all the time when we're human we're, we're meant to experience every emotion yeah. and that helps us um distinguish and deal with them along the way so i i feel like it's um just understand you're, you're going to experience peaks and troughs and and different emotions along the way and yeah. that perseverance to keep going um will bring you them them brighter days yeah. you know ahead and and be ready to sh- and and should i say be open to sharing that with the people around you to to make sure you've got your support mechanisms in place to definitely definitely and uh yeah have have good people around you that that also are aware of that and when you when you're down they can help pick you up and when you're up you can have that same impact on them yeah yeah and and i guess just to round off like what what is next for harlem eubank i'm i'm deep in in training right now i've just got <laughs> fighting on my mind yeah. and um i'm just ready to to come and bring a big performance and and sh- and show the world what i can do yeah. and um ahead of that i don't know but right now i'm just i'm just um deep in in my training and my preparation yeah. um, to come and bring the heat. I, I, and again, I, you know, I want to say thanks for coming along today. I think what's really, again, interesting is just getting into that mindset of what it takes to actually become, you know, a champion in your in your chosen field and just kind of getting peek behind the scenes. But again, what really, really resonates is 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 commitment, focus, clarity, and um, you know, and resilience right the way through. So, you know, thanks for. For, for joining this has been episode three of business fashion and cool shit remember these episodes will air every two weeks so make sure you stay tuned for more content incoming at the end of london